Occasionally I do homework, like over the weekend. Let's see. On Monday, I had to give a presentation in my macroeconomics class. And I started it on Sunday at about 4.30. So I was on the computer working on that till about 2 in the morning. Because I want to do pre-med, um, I know it's going to be a lot of studying. So um, it's not going to be as much fun. Uh, my mom has always said that college was kind of a big step. It's just where you kind of learn to balance um, free time and studying. I want to join a sorority, which obviously um, you get, you're going to party a lot, you have some fun. America is, uh, is the one country in the world that doesn't seem to recognize that it's in competition for the great minds in the capital of the world. Uh, some talk. This is a strength in numbers. Uh, 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 Americans aren't globally aware. They're more worried about what's happening in their community than they are in the world. Americans don't know they're competing with any than Chinese. Brains are everywhere. Discoveries can be made everywhere. And industries built on those discoveries also can be anywhere. You have to find, means you have to find A in the first equation, then substitute here. In India, once you get into this academic course and you're serious about it, you don't have much of the option to choose between academics and something else. It's either academics and nothing else. The people who are potentially losing their competitive edge are Americans. the argument that America's schools have lost their edge, they're not graduating enough engineers. China and India turn out hundreds of thousands more engineers than we do, and that means our future is at risk. Right, what if it's not quite true? This is one of those conventional wisdoms that there are some people who strenuously disagree with. It. So let's talk with Bob Compton, executive producer of the documentary Two Million Minutes. Many of you on our show would have seen him a couple weeks ago as we've been talking about this education issue. Jay Matthews is the education reporter for the Washington Post and author of the upcoming book Teach Baby Teach. Thanks to both of you for being with us. And Bob, uh, let me start with you. You, you spent a lot. You, you did this, this uh, a movie following kids around here in the U.S. High schoolers, America, India, and China. That's correct. Bottom line takeaway: What is it that makes you believe that they are doing something more right? than we are. Well, uh, a couple things. One, I went into the classrooms and saw how they were teaching. I talked with students. I've looked at their curriculum in detail and compared it to the American curriculum, or at least one, one state's American curriculum. Uh, did the same with China. And I hire young people in both those countries in technical jobs. I also I own six software companies here in the US. I hire people in those technical jobs. I am getting the best talent for high-wage, high-technology jobs in India and China. And how do you respond, before I bring Jay in, to the, the big, when, when, when CEOs say that, our viewers all say, well, maybe that's just because he wants to pay them less and they will work for less money over there when they're really no, qualified here. How do you respond to that? Well, I'll tell you how I respond to it. Mm -hmm. I, my six companies, six software companies here, have 200 open positions right now for Java programmers, paying $100,000 to $120,000 a year. If somebody wants a job, send me their resume, I'll hire them. I mm -hmm. cannot find the employees. 
In this country. In this country. So right, I am Jay. forced to go overseas. Jay, what do you say? Well, there is indeed a teeny slice of Chinese and, and Indian schools that are educating kids at a very high level, and that's good. The more middle class Chinese and Indian we have out there, the more customers for American goods. But Bob is suggesting that our country is going to hell on a handbasket if we don't improve the schools, because the schools are the key to the economy. We've proved over the last several years that it's not our schools that produce our great economy, it's people like Bob. Bob will tell you himself he had a pretty bad education, he didn't do very well, didn't apply himself, but he's a smart, creative guy. Once he got into the American economic, social, and Hold cultural on. system, yeah. uh, he went he went to bananas. He's a terrifically creative guy who's produced lots of companies, produced lots of millionaires. It's not the schools that produce Bob. It's the our system, which the Chinese and the Indians have a long way to go to. But you're talking about leaders there, Jay, right? I mean, people who will be creative and entrepreneurs and lead companies. Most people are going to work at companies and most people need jobs, and that's where the problem appears to be we're, in the matter. In order to get jobs, perfected jobs, you have to be creative. The Chinese and Indian systems, the Chinese political system, the Indian social system, discourage creativity of the sort Jay, that, that is has made Bob all true. this money. Jay, Jay, Chinese and Indians are highly creative. I employ I, they are I employ indeed, but if you are a creative person and, and in China, the political system people. isn't going to let you go to the full for extent of that creativity. Jay, and the Jay, social system Jay, in India is answer not one question either. for me, Jay. Yeah. When were you in India? Never been in India. You've never been to India. When was the last time you were in China? 1989. 1989, almost 20 years ago. Things have changed radically, Jay. You I, need to I, get I'm, out I'm more. I'm afraid, Bob, that you're there. absolutely wrong about that. The political system in China... How can you is, say... You haven't been there, man. How have can you, you say that? Have you visited any uh, la reform for labor camps in China? Have you looked at what Jay, happens to Jay, I'm looking distance? at education. I'm looking at education. And their education is superior. And it's not just a tiny slice. We have 53 million kids in K-12 through here in America. In India, they have 212 million. In China, they have 194 million. So a tiny slice of 200 million, we're talking about tens of millions of kids who are getting great education. Ah, but it is two happening, Jay. Two thirds of the kids it. in each of those countries aren't getting much of an education at all because they have huge numbers of poor Jay, people so who are not what? getting out of school at all. Jay, so what? Some of them aren't getting an education. There are a lot of people in America who aren't getting an education. I mean, I see it in Memphis where I live. The fact is, hundreds of millions of Indians and Chinese are getting a great education and they're raising their cognitive skills hundreds of millions over periods Completely of years Jay. False. over periods of years Jay that's that's a complete sham hundreds of millions uh, well, now, hold, on, about, hold on let me just clarify here, the, the heard, statistics I gave you right I don't want to get I don't want to argue over that so you said right now there are 53 million students in K through 12 in the United States that's do you right. agree with that Jay is that right that's right okay, okay. and in India that comparable number is 200 212 million. 212 million is that right Jay I think that's probably right, but that's the problem the Columbia, is Columbia school the uh, vast education. majority of those 212 million don't get out of senior high school. Right, but the only isn't that the most Americans don't either. Most that's people exactly finish right. with, with, a, with a high school equivalent 80, degree, and that's what they have their career of based on. Eighty-three percent of Americans get out of high school, and 30 percent have college degrees. The percentage of kids getting college degrees in India and China is much less. But, but, but Jay, the, the numbers game here, I think, is what would worry a lot of people, right? Well, because even if you only have a small percent of the 212 million actually going on to jobs, it's still more than it's maybe a, it's we would have, right? It's a false calculus because you have to consider in that calculus how many of your people in your country are still living of subsistent rages in, in farms, and which is a huge drag on both those Jay, economies. Jay, let, let's talk about economically. I am telling you, because I, am, I don't know how many people you employ in India or China, or in the U.S. for that matter, but I have started lots of companies all over the world. I've invested in companies all over the world. I'm hiring people right now into high technology, software, and biotechnology companies in India and China, as well as the U.S., and I'm getting the best talent, the most creative talent, the highest educated talent in India and China. Now, you tell me your experience. Well, the, the, you, what you're saying is absolutely right, and keep in mind that they're being hired by an American company that has all the, the creative talent and all the freedoms to do what you want to do with those companies. The reason you're so successful is because you have the creativity that matches the creativity of your culture. The Chinese, unless they find you, are going to find much less ability and, and range to be able to uh, out, put out that creativity because of the limits of their political system. Right. Same thing with India, the Jay, limits of Jay, the economy you, and the social system. You've you got to get over India and China, man. You, you don't know what you're talking about. That's what your movie is about, India and China. Yes, and you've got to go visit there. It's changed since you've been there, man. Uh, go yeah, to I, India.
It's changed. Uh, I, have, I have had long conversations with our correspondents in both places. I tell you what, I'll what pay for your plane ticket, Jay. Thin slice of Jay. The I think, hey, I'll pay your plane ticket. Jay go with me. I'm going in December. Go together. Go in December with me. I'm taking a whole team. We're going to tour. We're going to tour schools through December and January. I'll pay your way. Come with me. What do you say, Jay? Unfortunately, the Washington Post can't accept freebie trips, but our correspondents are already there. Lot looking at it every day, and they are telling me exactly what's happening. You're describing right. countries that don't okay, exist. Okay, look, we got to leave it there, guys. Here, here's here's the takeaway, though. Uh, you, you both have fair points, though. I have to say, Jay, that Bob's one point that he does raise. You gotta go. You gotta go, right? <laughs> you gotta go. I know you got great reporters and everything, but go over and because we have Bob, we're going to win this battle in the in the long term. They don't have Bob there. All right, Bob Jay, thank you very much. And I am sure a lot of you had some very strong opinions about that conversation. But that's really what all of you were asking for. You were asking for someone who hired people to tell us where, where people were better educated, here or there. And you also asked us about whether it was a money issue or an education issue. Bob tried to answer those questions for you.